Hi everybody, Mark Cleghorn here for the Academy. Uh, welcome back. Uh, so uh, today we're looking at backgrounds, retouching, replacing. Uh, I'm also going to show you a little bit of a headache one, uh, which it's, it's always good not just to see an easy kind of how to fix it, but also there's some stupid things that we all do and we basically got to be able to actually kind of crack those anyway. Look, we're alive on uh, YouTube, so get your questions in as you go. If you're unfamiliar with the Photographer Academy, um, we're an online training company for photographers based on streaming video. We're in our 13th year now. Uh, there's over three and a half thousand films available. We've made close to 5,000. Um, however, we always do a cull each year of anything that we feel is not relevant and so on with it. But if you just look on screen for a minute, you're seeing, uh, in fact, uh, last week's live films. So it includes some uh, kind of webinars, some headshots, skin retouching, which was our Academy Live, of course. And then things like, you know, creative dance photography and so on. So again, when you're joining the Academy, it's just not to watch what we're doing live without the ads, because you don't have ads on the inside, as it were. Uh, basically, we've got trade partners who've been with us for many, many years. But basically, you'll go in and you'll watch the film straight away with it and things. So the only reference you ever see to any advertising at all is basically to do with, uh, when it says sponsored, it's technically not. They're just one of our trade partners, like showing tether tools here. But you will all also get to see other things that we feel are relevant to that as well. Right. Let's come back to today, okay? So remember, if you want to join up to the Photographer Academy, uh, basically there's an offer at 59 quid for the whole year where you can watch everything uh, um, up to the pro level. It's nine, 99 quid for the year if you want to um, have our business content as well and things really, but um, 59 quid will give you pretty much 3,000 films. Right, shut up, Mark. Get on with today's demo. Right, what we're going to do, uh, we're going to show you some very quick fixes straight away. Um, not just taking an easy route, um, but we'll also just show you how to kind of just jazz up your photographs as a touch. And then we'll look at, as I said, the impossible retouching or how I think and how I approach a, prob a problem image that I've done myself. Um, let's just uh, kind of uh, reset this image here that we're seeing on screen. Basically, uh, Kel Kelsey, one of our wonderful models that we use time and time again with the Acad Academy, a great girl. Um, and basically, uh, instead of just a kind of white background, we've just looking to add a texture in and things. So let's, uh, you know, let's start from scratch, shall we? Just so you know that we're not cheating here or anything else. So let's just come into Bridge. Um, I've got a series of backgrounds that I've either created or downloaded myself uh, during the course of uh, my career. Uh, and let's just call up two images of Kelsey and we'll just load them straight into um, Photoshop itself, okay? So um, again, once they're here, I've got one which is an unlit white background and another which is a lit white background. Let's talk about the darker one first. Um, it's probably where most people demonstrate um, because it's e easier to kind of cut them out and everything else with it. Um, let's just go and grab some background. So let's uh, create a background. Uh, is there a big one? No, it's not. Let's just open that up anyway. We'll double click it and then I'll just basically drag it onto uh, here. Now, as you can see, because that was a PSD layer, and I didn't have the whole image selected, um, it kind of has just copied across the pattern, yep, um, as far as the background's concerned. Uh, I'll talk this all through for you now in a minute. Um, as far as how this kind of can interact with the actual image anyway, I would suggest that you get familiar with the likes of your blend modes, uh, of the layer blend mode, so you can start to actually see what they're kind of doing. Now, if it is just a quick fix that we need here, if I switch this one off for a minute, and just go back to uh, uh, the image, Photoshop really has some very intelligent um, um, kind of things for us to do now, all right? So in other words, if we just kind of select onto one of the selection tools, and I can already kind of uh, see select object here, or select sub uh, subject, I should say. Um, the AI, the ar artificial intelligence within Photoshop is gonna go in and do a pretty good job to begin, uh, begin with. Now, of course, um, I've got several ways that I can basically work. 
I can either make a duplicate of that selection, Control J, just kind of created that new layer. In this case, if I switch the top layer on, remember um, that a layer basically is kind of um, uh, allowing itself to either be seen or not seen. All right. So when something is solid, it will hide everything below. It's only the blend modes that will actually change how it becomes more visible. Or we start to use masking to actually create the kind of the different kind of see-through effects and so on. Because I, men I mentioned to you, uh, as you can see here, this is a, a very specific kind of background that we created for kind of a boudoir series of images. But if I just went shift control alt e for a minute, that creates a new background based on all visible layers, okay? So it creates a new layer based on all visible layers. We'll come back to that one in a minute, all right? Let's come uh, in into here. So let's, first of all, when we're talking about layers, um, really what we want to do is basically e either put this texture, yeah, this one, either between um, the selection that we made and created that new layer, or we need to actually move this uh, new layer on top of it. Whichever way, we're basically going to sam sandwich the texture on the background with the actual um, uh, image and things, really. So, for instance, if I didn't want it as sharp as this, and I wanted to give some kind of fake depth of field, I could just go into blur now. If I was going to actually blur, I would actually, first of all, turn this layer into a smart ob object, which means that when I apply the filter effects of fil uh, filter, blur, and Gaussian blur, I can actually change the amount. And if I do it uh, too much, let's say, like I've just done here, um, I can go back in and basically double click on, on it and, chain, and change it. Because a smart object or a smart layer um, is, is an intelligent layer and it basically means it's adjustable. So we can go back and actually change it. So remember, get questions in live because we are live today and things really. So what I would say is that when you are putting backgrounds behind a subject, Think about the distance they are away from the background. Think about the kind of the styling that you're doing and how much of the depth of field that you actually want to create, okay? So, uh, we've got that kind of photograph uh, working uh, pretty good. Press OK on that one. Uh, let's go and grab that other layer now and we'll drag that on. So, uh, with the Move tool, if I just drag it and I put it over the top of the photograph, if I press the shift key when I let go, it puts it absolutely bang smack in the middle of the image. Now you can see that this background is smaller in resolution than the image that I created anyway, so I need to make this bigger. Now as a rule, you tend not to actually um, want to interpolate an image, in other words, make it bigger than it physically is in real life. Because this is a background, I can. In other words, it's gonna be blurred anyway, so it's gonna not really kind of show up. So you can start, start to see now that if I change the blend mode to one of the different modes here, it starts to interact in a slightly different way, as long as I've got the right background on, uh, a different way with the kind of the layer that is below. So um, get used to actually kind of playing around with these things to find what you think is right for you. Now, not only can I change the overlay or the blend mode, yes, um, but I can also change the opacity. So if I want it to actually just be a little bit less or more, whatever it be and things. If I still find that that image is um, a little bit light or dark or whatever it be, I can add adjustments, adjustment layers to it as well to affect it. So if I wanted this image, uh, if I put it back to 100% minute, if I wanted it not to have any tone, so it's too um, kind of uh, colourful, in other words, got a purple tinge to it, I could actually go in and uh, add in another layer. In this case, we'll go a hue and saturation adjustment layer. And now all I've got to do is actually start to actually take the colour down or increase it, of course, yeah? But if I take it down, it'll take more and more of the purple away um, it'll go down to a pure black and white if I take 100% of color away as well. Okay, so uh, again, we've got this control of what we're trying to actually achieve. I can even change its tone 
uh, as well. So as far as backgrounds and replacement is concerned, it's, it's not hard. Now, I, I mentioned that um, a, a lot of uh, kind of demonstration is done on a darker background because it's easier to make that selection wherever it is. Let's look at the same thing with a lighter image here. Now, the Photoshop artificial intelligence really has come about in, in the past kind of couple of years. So since about 2020, 29, uh, 2019 ver versions, uh, basically the AI really has come alive. So within here, once more, I could just go and let's go and uh, open up another photograph, uh, another background. Let's go and choose that one. And once more, we'll just go and grab it and drag it. Remember the shift key if you want it bang smack actually in the middle. You can see that this one is slightly bigger, um, but it's still not as big as. Now, if I was doing this a lot, I would basically want to make the uh, backgrounds that I create the same size as the actual maximum resolution of my images that I'm shooting as. So it saves all the kind of uh, creating them bigger and smaller or whatever it would be each time with it and things. As it is, if I just click on the show transform controls here at the top, um, I can basically just go straight in and basically kind of drag it. Uh, and then if I switch the show controls off again, it's, it's gone. So I, I mentioned because uh, we didn't make a selection uh, before, now we can't see the image. So the only way for us to see the image is to go ahead and actually change one of the blend, the, uh, the blend modes, okay? So you can see how the different ones affect uh, an image and they'll affect a different one, whether it's a dark background or a light background and obviously the different image that you've kind of got going on as well and things, all right? So in this case, uh, if we look at a darkened kind of mode, uh, you can see that basically it's kind of showing through um, a lot of her face. So let me just uh, grab here. It's showing through the face, but in fact, it's not showing all of the face through. So in other words, if I wanted to kind of quickly make her, um, like we did on the other photograph, kind of on top, yeah, I'll just select the background layer, click onto the selection tool. In this case, it's the ob object selection tool. Click on the select subject. AI is going to do its job and basically make the selection around her. It's looking at all the hair details and everything else with it and things. And I've got two options. I can e either do the control J or in this case, I could select the background layer and then all I've got to do is uh, click on the mask while I hold down the Alt key, and then basically it kind of protects her, okay? So you can see now what I've done is I've protected Kelsey fully from the actual um, uh, texture itself and things really. And if you didn't want to work in that way, so if I just do Control Z of that for a minute, let's get rid of the selection. Grab it and throw it away. And we go back, we make that select sub subject once more. Okay, I could select on the top image now, still create the mask. Yes, and you can see straight away it's kind of created uh, the reverse of what, of what we want because I just pressed the mask and I would need now select the mask and just con control I to invert it. But you don't have to work in this way. You can actually work to actually paint through it. Remember, black hides and white reveals. So as we're looking at the mask here, we've got a white background, so that means all of the background is revealed. Whereas um, we're looking at the black of her, and that means that she's protect, uh, protected. So it's it's a good way for us to kind of do the ba the basics. So one once more, you can kind of go in, add your textures, make it lighter or dark, and whatever you want to do. So uh, in other words, if I wanted to really make this much dark uh, darker, I'll just go into levels. I drag the midpoint down. Yeah, as you can see, it's adjusting all of the image. Don't worry about that yet, okay? And then basically, if I get it to the point that I want, I want it to, once that's done, I can now say, well, okay, don't affect the background and the image at the bottom, just affect the background. So in this case, all I've got to do is press the Alt key, and then as, as it kind of clicks, it will just affect the background layer below. So if I switch that one on and off, 
you can see the original background is here, but now I've just made it dark, uh, darker. In exactly the same way though, we've got the option here to change the opacity to actually have those controls, okay? So, right, let's, um, that's, that's kind of the, ba the basics done. Um, so we've kind of shown, uh, sh shown you how to add backgrounds on, how to kind of use the AI in Photoshop with the mask in and so on with it, all right? Let's go in and choose a much more difficult photograph, all right? So um, we're gonna actually choose this image in a minute, all right? It's gonna give me a, ni a nightmare, he says, trying to launch it. All right, it's gonna give me a nightmare um, because there's so many things that is a problem within this Im image. There's a barreling of the lens. You know, there's the wide angle lens is giving a curvature to the squares. It, we've got um, some of the, uh, so obviously we've got the squares, the black and white squares by themselves working in perspective. Uh, we've got vignetting going on and things really. There is so many things that you would go delete it, yeah, or crop it. Because that's the quickest way to basically fix anything is crop out the problem. <laughs> what do I mean by that? I, I literally mean crop out as much of the pro uh, problem as you physically can. And if it was a, com a commercial photograph, give it to the uh, uh, client and basically let, let them fix it. <laughs> but as a rule, we should be able to actually kind of fix it. It might be for our own portfolio, whatever it is. But I'm just not going to cheat and do that in a minute, all right? We will come back and we'll look at the technique that I will use to actually kind of bring it back alive and things really. So let's just go back to file and revert it. Um, F12 is the Photoshop standard to revert it back to actually what the file was and things really. Right, I'm going to go and choose um, another photograph, which is basically uh, one of the films that we did on the uh, Academy, uh, which you can watch and things really. And let's, it's kind of to mimic a perf perfume ad. And let's choose that image as well. It's going to open up two photographs. Uh, one, as you can see, is just the um, uh, flower background being used as a floor, and the other is the model on the actual flowered background itself and things really. There's a slightly different um, uh, perspective once more going on, uh, which is just a bit of a shame. So the kind of the quick fix with this for me would straight away be, okay, what are we trying to do? If we're trying to extend all the background, see what Photoshop can do first. That's key with it, yeah? So let's just go into the selection tool. We'll just select the top part here and we'll hit the backspace, which will bring up the fill dialog box. In this case, I want content aware, which is correct. So it's gonna kind of look at it now and go, okay, what do I wanna replace it with? It hasn't done a bad job. Okay, that's better than I expected it to be, in fact. Um, we can go in and kind of fix these little parts now in a minute. So instead of trying to do that whole section at a time, when you're using the content aware fill, try and basically do just the little bits. Uh, allow Photoshop to really kind of uh, work uh, for, for you instead of against you. Let's try and do that one big piece at once. It will slight a slightly kind of bring us uh, textures in as well. Um, and it's where it kind of looks at the surrounding area and tries to actually kind of uh, uh, work well together. Let me just bring the lasso tool up for a minute. Hit that again, oh, wrong button. D, D, content where fill, working too fast. Okay, so we've, we've kind of done a job, yes? But if we really look in close, you can see that there's some darkness and lightness and everything else with it and things really. So it kind of, it will do a job, but we're gonna then have to go in and spend a bit of time kind of cloning. And in the question would be is actually, what are you gonna clone from? Uh, what I would much prefer to do is clone from something like an original, like this image. Um, so that it basically allows us to kind of fill in with the same textures of the same size compared to actually kind of um, um, trying to uh, focus in all over the place and everything else with it. Plus what I do like about this kind of area here at the top, it does have the vignette in. It, it literally does have what we want it to kind of do. So um, if I kind of just 
cheat for a minute and I just go in and I select that whole kind of layer. Yeah, and I copy it. And I just now paste it on top. Um, if I now try and basically um, make it uh, filled, in other words, uh, I kind of make it bigger, in other words, control T, I basic, so that's the free transform, and I make, I make this bigger to actually fill the area, uh, the area. What I'm actually doing is basically, I've made the flowers bigger. So um, when we kind of just go back onto here again, Photoshop will do a good job here, watch. Select, sub, select subject, it's gonna do a decent job here, even though it's a lot of texture going on. I can just tell from what is, is there. Uh, obviously have to go in here and basically add in just uh, a little bit more. So in other words, shift key, and we'll just add in the hair, I'll probably actually add in all of that within there. Uh, add a little bit more, just actually through here. Anything that's flashing, that's okay. So if I now go Control J, so that's going to actually put it on top. If I just move her on top of the other layer, you can see what I mean now. The flowers have got bigger and now it kind of looks fake, yeah? So if we come back into this image again, all right, and we do exactly what we did before. So in other words, we go now and we make the selection, do it a little bit slower, don't do the whole thing at once. Try and just uh, allow the AI to actually do a slower, better job by looking at the different areas. I'm only moving from one side to the other because I'm thinking about what selection I'm going to make before I move on to the next one. So there's no reason why I can't go down here again, yeah? So already we're seeing a much better finish to the image than we saw when we actually had the model in the same kind of um, pose. So if possible, always take a photograph of your backgrounds um, before you, you basically either have the model on there or before you change over the set and things ready. It kind of just allows us to have a little bit of a kind of a quick fix. So pretty much there. All I've got to do now is with the um, clone stamp tool is basically start to actually put some areas back in. Try and avoid from the repeating pattern. I'm only using a mouse, not using a pen and tablet. I use a pen and tablet the majority of the time, but it's not the be all and end all. Let's go step backwards on that one, just going something a little bit darker. So I kind of quite like the way that it's all kind of beginning to vignette and everything else with it. And the kind of almost the tech of the textures that's going on. Repeating patterns is something we've got to really watch out for. We've got one already there, see it? So just uh, make sure we get rid of that. There you go. Right, okay. So now at this point, I would definitely want to go and save this as the kind of the texture let me just make something a lot bigger for a minute. Okay, cool. There you go. Right. So um, I'd want to go in and save this um, to make sure that basically I don't have to redo this time and time again and things ready. So at that point, I would just go Shift Control Alt S or come up to File Save As. Yep. And then at this point, at this point, I would just give it a zero and it would be background. Now, already within the file has already got um, my kind of uh, metadata and everything else, so I don't need to go back in and change this. Remember, we covered this in session one. So, red petals, pressing save, save about a 10. Okay. Um, now at this point, all I've got to do, remember where we were before, remember this was the kind of the background that looked weird, yeah? Let's drag in this one now. Remember what I was saying to you before, shift key and drop it, puts it bang smack in the middle. Let's put it below. And now she starts to actually look a lot more 
kind of where she was in the beginning as far as the, the, the kind of the size of the, the kind of the petals are concerned and things really, right? So there was the original one we did. Now we've kind of actually just Photoshopped it in and we could start to actually kind of blend these together. The lighting though is kind of, you know, I'm not a massive fan of it and things really. Um, but again, we've done a, a job. Um, and obviously what you want to try and do is minimize the likes of the post-production timing. So um, if you're new to the Photographer Academy, we're an online training company for photographers based on streaming video. Uh, and uh, if you're not a member already, you can kind of head over to our website, thephotographeracademy.com, uh, where you can actually see all, all of our film content, as well as any live events that we've got coming up and things really. As far as the film content, we put live a minimum of three different films per week, but it's more like five to seven, you know, depends on the kind of thing that we've got going on there, but with a whole range of different people. As you can see, uh, it goes back to 2009 um, as far as the images, even though we've been going for 13 years now, uh, we've got 12 years worth of content still on here, but we do go in and edit things out. Right, so I promised, um, we're going to look at that problem image, uh, and it really is uh, not an easy fix. There's lots of tools that you might want to look at as far as perspective, uh, free transform, so anything to do with the, uh, the kind of the uh, perspective, uh, warp, puppet warp, free, uh, the free transform. If I just make a selection for a minute, so we just pick up the polygonal lasso tool for a minute, we just make a selection. Let me just do that again, Cleghorn. That would really help. So um, from here now, what are we actually trying to... Uh, let's uh, control J it. So if we look at the selection we made, um, basically it's there, and we could attempt to kind of drag it down and everything else with it. But the one thing that you'll see is because of this curvature that I was, med I was mentioned before, that we need to really go in and use one of the actual tools to kind of make it kind of work for, for us instead of against us. Um, and the likes of the uh, puppet warp or something like that would help would help us. So going into uh, edit and transform puppet warps here, perspective warp, free transform, and obviously the different transforms that you've got in here. Um, but you'll you'll kind of find uh, um, you you using a similar technique all the time. But when you've got a difficult one like this that there is no quick fix. You've, you've literally got to go in and just start on the clone stamp tool and start to actually really make it come alive. We could ev even go in and basically make a black and white um, brush, square brush, or a, a black and white kind of uh, pattern. We can do lots of things, but we're still going to end up with a, prob a problem. And realistically, what we want to do is, is basically fill in as much as we can. So the first thing would be, don't do things that you don't need to do. So in other words, if you didn't want the bottom of the image, don't retouch it. Um, however, if you think you will want it in the future, it doesn't mean you've got to do all that kind of fixing now, all right? What I would say is basically, um, retouch the elements that you want and ignore the rest, okay? So if we're looking here, the ladder we definitely need, we need to fix in, in, in some way, yes? Um, and we could go in and basically try and make a simple selection from within the actual square itself. Yep, and uh, at, this, at this point, different things, different tools, uh, depends on what you want to do with it. We can even kind of go in and try the patch tool to actually kind of get that to work for us, but it's going to give us some weird effects and blah, blah, blah. Uh, but realistically, it's more what we want to actually copy. So another, oh, wrong button. If we just uh, kind of pick up the selection tool again, and we move that to here for one minute. Yep. Uh, and we basically copy it. And then we move it back to where we want it to go and we paste it in. 
um, it's going to kind of start to do a job, but it's going to be a problem. A problem. Uh, it's, it's looking back and what we used to call image mapping. Make the decision on what you need to physically do to this image. So just, just don't jump, jump in with a tool. Look at it and go, okay, this is what I really need to do here. So the first things for me would be S for clone stamp tool, shrink, shrinking down the brush big enough that when I get across towards here, it's not going to pick up the arm and all those kind of things with it. I'm going to pick the um, the kind of the uh, tar uh, the target here is going to be the joint between the um, uh, the black and the whites there. Then I'm just going to go and quickly put in a new um, uh, layer, and now I'm going to just kind of go in and actually start to actually paint it across it and things really. So there are times, unfortunately, that we've just got to go back to the, ba the basics and we start to actually fix the kind of the one part at a time, yeah? Don't try and do it all at once with it because you're just going to frustrate yourself, I promise you. So in the same way, once more, let's kind of now just fix that kind of um, area, area on top. I want to current and below. Just select that image there, it's gone, okay? Um, you can see already though that if we pick that corner once more between the black and the whites and we come back onto here, now we can start to actually kind of get rid of the next part. So I'm trying to stay away from her arm, okay? Let's fix the other things first. Notice now how the one black square that we just retouched is fixed in the other one, but can you see already? Uh, we've got a problem that it's begun to actually uh, uh, change its perspective now. Okay, so we've got a problem already that basically this is smaller than this because of the view of the angle. Control Z to just kind of get rid of that. So if you're thinking where is it going to become a problem, then we can basically go, okay, so let's get to so far and then we'll stop. Yes? And then we'll start to actually look at the realignment again. So is there somewhere here that is in a similar size and similar tone that I can start to work with? So I've got it there again. Let's create another layer in case I need to slightly free transform it in a minute. Just kind of fix that part, fix down there, fix the black edge. Uh, we'll just do and fix on that for a minute. I'm going to go back again and do that. History. There we go. Um, bring in my new layer again. I went too fast, that's all. Just picking it in here again. Choose where we're going to go from. Wrong button mark. Choose from there would help. So with this image, I would much prefer to, you know, like we just did a minute ago where we were retouching the um, petals, I'd much prefer to have um, had a blank checker floor and basically be able to um, work on that direction than anything else. Notice there, I just actually clicked on the erase to, hist to history. That, because I haven't cropped the image, it's the original image that basically it's copying from. I haven't set a new history point uh, in any way with it, things really. Obviously, if you kind of get it wrong, just reset it and so on with it. If you need a nice clean edge, S for, um, S for the clone stamp tool again, let's just go and pick up that uh, edge-wise. Will that do our job? pick up from there again. What happens when we start to actually stroke downwards? It's going to do our job for us fine until we get to here. Then we go across to this part. Now we copy in this part here. Start to get rid of that. Then let's go and choose just another one of those squares just to get rid of that middle. I'm trying to have to stop than just going in all the time and making all these different kind of um, s 
selections. I could use the pen, the pen tool to go in here, but you might think that this is kind of being the quickest way. And it's not a bad, bad way. Um, and then all it's going to do is obviously kind of get your pattern and start to actually paint in the oh, clone stamp tool mark. And then start to actually get rid of the parts that you don't want and so on. But you soon start to see that if we haven't defined this area rear up here as a pattern, and actually you are using that, we're going to get different colors coming through and everything else with it. But for me, as I said, when I'm working with this kind of image and I haven't done my job to begin with, especially it's a vinyl floor that is not flat, it's bobbling all over the place and everything else with it, you want to go in and take your time. But the key thing to begin with was actually look at the image and actually decide on what you need to work in first. The first thing that, as I said, don't crop unless you absolutely need, need to crop, but have like a, a, an almost invisible line what you know the area, the area you're going to be wor working on. So in other words, if you wanted to kind of just um, select across the image and go, okay, this is the uh, part of the image I really want, create a kind of a, um, uh, a layer for you yourself, uh, go and choose a color and, and basically select and inverse it. Yep, you can see it's only a little bit there anyway and then basically if we just hit the backspace, if we just turn that layer down to 50%. Uh, let's say there was a little piece down here that we didn't want to re retouch for whatever reason with it. Uh, in the same, same way, you can basically then switch this on and off to actually see what you do need to adjust and what you don't need to adjust. So in other words, the red is not, ne not needed. The reason I don't want to do it straight, uh, straight away is in case I want to come back to it at some point and basically kind of fix it again. As I said, that is a really, really difficult one, and one that is gonna spend probably a good half an hour having to, re uh, to retouch all those areas anyway when things really. But I would always choose my battles. That's the key thing with Photoshop. Please, please, please try and do it in, in the photographic stage before you then try and fix things within the likes of Photoshop, because it can be a, you know, a really hard task and things really. Any questions there at all, Brandon? Yeah. Yeah, sure. Okay. Uh, are there any settings that would stop someone from doing that? Because somebody said they tried it and it didn't work. Uh, shouldn't do. Uh, not that I'm aware of. Not unless it's um, a. Why? I'm just trying to think of a reason why a minute. Um, why wouldn't you do it? No, uh, it, could only, it could only be if the background is um, stuck. Uh, in other words, you no, know, but you can bring anything. I can't think of a reason. A smart object we can bring from one image to another. So uh, let's just choose a, another image. Uh, it's kind of one of the images that we were working on last week. You know, it's a lot more difficult as well because of all the feathers. Um, I, I can't think of a reason, Brandon. I'm sorry, bud, uh, with that with it. Let's just go and pick a background. Uh, yeah choose a, diff a different one again. There is loads of backgrounds out of there for you to download free of charge, as long as you're not using them commercially and so on. Many of them are gonna be very, very small though in resolution. Don't worry about them because they are gonna be a background. Um, so like we were showing, um, all, all I did here was choose the move tool, yes? And then drag it across. When you drag it across, if you press the shift key while you drag it and let go, it centers the Im image. So if we, let's delete that one for a minute. So if we know what this size of photograph is, okay, so image, image size, its longest length is 5,760 pixels by 3,840 wide. So if we make that other textured background for a minute, 6,000 high by 4,000 wide. Yeah, so just press OK or can, can cancel. So let's go image, image size, and we, okay, we now want to make this 4,000 wide, yes, 
and 6,000 tall, which it's done it by itself there, all right? Pressing OK. If I now shift control Alt S, in other words, save a copy as, or save for web, your donut, shift control S, you would help. All right, let's create a new fold, a folder within here and let's call it 6,000 pixels. So now we know that texture seven, don't need it at a 12, seven is fine. So now this image, I've made it bigger than the uh, image I'm gonna be dropping on all the time. So because I didn't press the shift, as you can see, it just drops it where I left the cursor. Let's do control Z and let's go back to it, bring it in. Doesn't matter where I put the cursor at this point, if I press the shift key, it basically drops it bang smack in them in the middle. And as it is, because it's slightly bigger than the original, I've got a little bit of kind of wiggle room as well. Obviously, if I want to uh, transform it, so in other words, I want the kind of the grungy part at the top, just control T and just rotate that round kind of works. Then you're kind of going to look at, okay, what can I use to change the background effect? I really like the multiply, it darkens, yeah, uh, already. Let's select the image below. Let's just go in and uh, object selection, select sub, sub subject. And I'm just going to go to control J. I'm going to bring her up on top straight away. So straight away, we've got pretty good kind of background. Let's just switch her off and see where the problems are. Obviously, we know it's going to be around the feathers. We know it's going to be around here. Look, we can see all this kind of going on. However, yeah, if we then go into the mask and we basically then start to actually paint, uh, we can start to actually paint this effect away. So B for brush, D for default, yeah, X to put black on top and then start to actually paint. Yes, you can see it that we want all this kind of lovely tech, a texture that is below. Because it's similar, I don't even have to go to 100% there. I can go in and actually just change my opacity down. Or I could go do a finer selection, of course, and things, yeah? Um, but as is, let's just change the opacity. Bigger brush. Okey doke. So if I liked this kind of image, but I felt the background was too dark, I'm <laughs> going, ah, oh, click on. Should have made it into a smart object before. Why? Because if I click on it now to do the smart object, convert to smart ob object, I lose my mask. All right. It's not the end of the world. Remember, if I double click into it, it opens up the image that has the mask, but now I can't see it. It just means I've got to create another mask. Yeah. I just hate the slow part of it and things really. Yes, there is a telephone call coming in and I need to say no to it. <laughs> all right, um, so uh, it, it wouldn't be the end, uh, the end of the world because all I gotta do is go and create another mask or I could have cheat, uh, cheated. I'll show, I'll show you the cheat. So control Z, all right. Let's just now drag this alt into the top layer. I've got a copy of it. See, I said I was gonna cheat, yeah. So now it's there. Now I'm going to actually convert this into a, uh, a smart ob, ob object, or I get rid of this first, delete it, yeah, showing you the workaround to the madness, yeah. Then you go into uh, right click, smart ob object. Now I go into filter blur and Ga Gaussian blur, change the background. That's better. Now I'm just going to guess what, guess what? Yeah, you got it. I'm going to move it down to here. Now it's back again. All right, so that's the workaround. So a bit of a kind of oh, flip, got to do it again kind of thing. No, there's always a way to do it. But look all of a sudden how we've kind of transformed a plain background into something a lot fun funkier, a lot more kind of grunge wor worthy and everything else within things. And obviously if you like the idea and you want to kind of kind of turn it into a bit more dripping, you could kind of go in and kind of blur it with stripes and do everything you want. But that's the great thing about Photoshop. It's there to be creative with and not just fix stuff. Any more questions, Brandon? Brill, you know what? Thanks for joining us live. By the way, I just love that image we just finished off with. <laughs>
<laughs> I hadn't planned to do that at all. So uh, the unhappy accident is really what it's about. Look, I uh, hope, hope you enjoyed this uh, kind of session. Um, I, I love being live because you see where you kind of fall over, fall over and then you kind of go back and you go, okay, well, this is how you fix it and kind of actually work around and so on. Uh, and, uh, but again, Photoshop is a language and you've just got to get used to the language and how to pronounce it and use the skills that you kind of do all the time and things. If you're not a member of the Photographer Academy, I'm sure there's an offer below. You can head over today. Um, in fact, even if you're not logged in, uh, if you logged out, as, as it were, yeah, um, you can still go in. Uh, and if you want to kind of see what the money's worth is, all right, uh, just click on to films. Do a search. You can operate everything and actually see what is behind the scenes and things, really. So it was funny that uh, one of our films has uh, got a little bit of traction over the weekend and people are complaining about the adverts on, you, on YouTube. It's like, well, duh. <laughs> uh, obviously pay your kind of pound a week, as it were, and then basically you're on, you know. Um, but from here, um, you can kind of go in and actually see all the most relevant co uh, content first, or you can kind of fine-tune the actual search engine down and down and down. Enough from me. Thanks for joining me live. See you all soon. Take care. Bye-bye.